Today, I am here at Burton Constable in Yorkshire. As you can see, it's a glorious Elizabethan house. And I'll be visiting the family who still live in part of the house, but also viewing the highlights of their very extensive collection. When I married into the British aristocracy, it was the start of a wonderfully exciting journey, but it was also a little daunting. I became a Viscountess, and for an American girl from a small town outside Chicago, that was quite a shock. I live with my husband Luke, heir to the Earl of Sandwich, and our family at Mapperton House in Dorset. Living in a place like this is a joy, but also a challenge, and every day we're aware that we're preserving a very special part of Britain's heritage. Mapperton has opened up an extraordinary new world for me, and I can't wait to share it with you all. So if you love castles and manors and stately homes as much as I do, please join this American Viscountess as I journey into the British countryside in search of some of Britain's finest historic houses. Thank you so much for joining me here in the drawing room at Mapperton. I know from my own research into the lives of the Montague family how absolutely fascinating it is to delve into the historic collections of houses like Mapperton. You can literally spend hours on a wonderfully exciting journey of discovery. And many historic houses open their doors to the public to share their amazing archives and treasures. On a recent visit to Yorkshire, I spent time at Burton Constable Hall, an absolutely beautiful Elizabethan house, home to the Constable family and their descendants for over 700 years. In 1992, the Burton Constable Foundation was established in order to safeguard the hall and collection for the future. And now the foundation, with the family, work to preserve and share the wonders of Burton Constable with the public. In the Great Hall, I met up with curator Philippa Wood to find out more about Burton Constable's past. So this painting shows it in around 1690. Okay, so that's one of the key periods of the house. That's when Sir John Constable had Built, it, built on it and expanded it. The earliest part of the hall was actually a tower, the North Tower, just there. Okay. And that's actually from the 13th century. Ah. But as the family gained power, they decided they needed a bigger house. So they just sort of expanded it as they went through. And so eventually you end up with this enormous structure and the courtyards were there, I promise. That's not just artistic <laughs> imagination, but. Incredible. It is. Absolutely incredible. And so who was within the family? Because I, it, I've read it's been in the family for, what, nearly 700 years. Is that right? Yes. It's, but who in the family decided to expand it? Was there one person in particular? So yes, so that was Sir John Constable. Who, so he's sort of the one we can attribute to what we see more of today? Yes, yeah, so he gained a lot of power from his uh, father-in-law. Okay. And he became the senior of Holdenness and he had all of this wealth and status in the county and that's when he decided to really create this grand mansion for his family to live in and move here from nearby Halsham where his family used to live. Okay, fantastic. Burton Constable Hall is an Elizabethan gem, but I couldn't help but notice some Georgian features. The Georgian side of things is from William, who inherited in the mid 1700s. Okay. He was, his nose was out of joint because he had not inherited the title. His, uh, his uncle, the fourth Viscount Dunbar, died without children, so it came through um, a cousin and then on to William. And so 
This, we think, was sort of William in a sense saying that he was still powerful and wealthy even though his family lost the title. So he completely redid the entire parkland, the entire house in more of a Georgian style. Right. Hence you get that door you just walked in, <laughs> which used to be in the next door room, but it was moved to the centre to create Georgian symmetry. Right. Believe it or not, the entire house was painted sort of an ochre white colour. No. Yes. So William really did create an awful lot of changes to this house. Yes. Incredible. And those changes, what we're seeing today, have stayed then throughout, after the Georgian period, throughout sort of the 19th century. There haven't been too many other changes. Not too many big structural right. changes. When the Victorians came in, yeah. everything was gilded. Everything <laughs> was bright and repainted and re-upholstered and everything was wonderful. <laughs> and we get a lot of ball furniture from that period, but a lot of the Georgian stuff does remain. Does remain, right. Uh, and to be honest, a lot of the Victorian gilding has since disappeared under further repaintings. Apparently at some point it became seen as an unfashionable. Yes. But you will see when we go into the next room that we've still got some very bright colours courtesy of the <gasps> 1970s family, some oh. of whom I believe you're going to be meeting yes. the family of today. Yes. Isn't that fascinating? I see it in almost every single historic house I visit. Each generation making their mark on the building. Today, Burton Constable is preserved and maintained by the Burton Constable Foundation. So the foundation took the house on in 1992, so we're a charitable trust. Yes. But the family still lease the South Wing, they're still trustees of the foundation. And our ethos is very much that we want to restore and retain everything, every part of the hall's history, and so the family is still very much a part of that. Fantastic. There are over 30 rooms overflowing with family treasures and memories. I could not wait to take a closer look. <gasps> yes, it's fantastic, ceiling, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> Tremendous, absolutely tremendous. So this is... This is the staircase hall. Right. So this is the room where everyone either loves or hates the colour scheme. There's very little any in between. I love it. I, mean, I love it I too. love it. <laughs> it's, a, it's because it's a showstopper. You walk mm -hmm. in and you can't help but just pause. It makes you look. Mm. <laughs> That's yep. what it does. Absolutely. So it makes you look. So tell me a little bit about this room. Believe it or not, it's actually one of the later areas of the house to be built. This was one of William's additions and it's cantilevered staircase is phenomenal. Right. Uh, and it was actually painted this colour in the 1970s by Gay to just Constable. So it's okay. one of our more recent colour schemes as well. Yes. Uh, but it's an absolutely phenomenal space. It's got some really lovely pieces of the collections in it. So it's got the Erard piano from the 1800s, which was a phenomenal piece even in its, in its time. It was one of the best pianos they made. And then Lady Rosina, when she got it, decided it wasn't grand enough and sent it away to be gilded in hull. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's a wonderful collection of piece. An absolutely stunning paintings. And look at the gilt frames. It's, it is very <laughs> yes, gilt. Absolutely. And that's why I think I love the, this sort of, you know, lemon, bright lemon mm -hmm. sunshine color. Yes. <laughs> I know. I mean, it, it sets does, the room off beautifully, doesn't it? It does Although, make me smile. <laughs> I agree. Of course, in the 19th century, all of the banisters were gilded. The, were they? Uh, yes, the cornices were gilded. Everything. Was, they brought in binks from Hull and just decorated everything. Just, so it would have been an even... You can imagine how colourful it would have been. Yes. I mean, with the sofas in here, it still has this, in one sense, hmm. a sense of a, of yes. a comfortable place to sit down. And that's something that the foundation really works on is to try and make this place feel like home, which is why we're so glad that the family are still very much involved yes. in the work that we do. Yeah, it's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Brilliant. Well, I'm glad you kept the colour. It <laughs> yes. does. It makes me smile when I, I come in here. Have you ever dreamed of staying in one of the UK's grand castles or stately homes with a group of family or friends? When I lived in America, it was always a dream of mine. The UK is brimming with them. There's a treasure trove of rich history, royal connections, and extraordinary stories. The allure of joining this world was irresistible. 
Fast forward to today and I've ended up living in one of these remarkable homes. I realize that I've been lucky. However, even if that hadn't happened, I could still have made my dream come true with the help of Storied Collection. And now you can too. Storied Collection offers exclusive hire of private estates and castles across the United Kingdom and Ireland, where the historical significance and legacy of each property are carefully preserved. And guess what? Mapperton is now officially a member of Storied Collection too. The historic houses in Storied Collection have been meticulously selected to provide the highest standards of accommodation and service, as well as unforgettable stories. Moreover, they offer a range of experiences, whether you're an avid fisherman, a golf enthusiast, or simply someone who delights in owner-guided tours. So if you're planning a large family gathering or a thrilling adventure with friends, a retreat with business colleagues, or perhaps your wedding, you can now make it happen in one of these homes, and it's much more affordable than you think. With an extraordinary variety of castles, manors, and stately homes available, this truly is a once in a lifetime opportunity. So don't let it slip away. Mention Julie when booking for 1,000 pounds off any stay five nights or longer. So click the link in the description down below to discover and book the historic house of your dreams. So where are we heading to next then? So we're going up the main stairs and yep. we're going to go to the long gallery, which is much more Elizabethan appearance, even okay. though like the rest of the house, it was hugely renovated in the 18th and 19th centuries. Well, that was absolutely exquisite and <laughs> the long gallery. Yes? Yes. Oh my goodness. Unmistakably, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> What, the ceiling is, so period-wise, this dates back to? 17th century. 17th century. So this is one of the oldest parts of the house. This is actually a really fascinating room because of course it's a typical long gallery in that it could be used for exercise when the weather was inclement <laughs> and the ladies could show off their fine gowns here. Uh, but it's also of particular interest to me because of this portrait here, which is Lady Margaret. And she was a famed recusant. She was always in trouble with the Queen uh, for hiding priests and not giving up her Catholic faith. Right. Uh, so much so that eventually her son had to write a document telling her where she could and couldn't go in the house because he wanted to save the rest of the family from getting in trouble <gasps> should the worst come to pass. So we know that Lady Margaret was given permission to walk up and down the long gallery, which is, always makes me particularly fond of this room, even when you take away the, how beautiful it is and the spectacular frieze at the top. Yeah. <laughs> the frieze is spectacular, but can I just ask, wh when was the frieze installed here? That would have been done in the 19th century when this room was very much in use. So this bay here used to be used as a theater, which is why we've now got some of the theater costumes and some of their theater flats <gasps> in here, just to sort of set the scene. Yes. And then as we go on further down, there's another big bay that would have been used for music. So you'd have had right. a piano there and a harp and various other musical instruments. So this has always been in use, right from the Tudor period, right up until the 19th century. It would have been, it would have been where people gathered. It would have been right. a real social place, a place for uh, first of all exercise and then music and entertainment. Yes. So it would have been really a phenomenal place. Oh, and we do have a chair that was used by Her Late Majesty Queen Victoria. No. So the family was actually of su sufficient standing that when Queen Victoria did visit Hull, it was actually the family who loaned her pieces for her hotel room. So uh, it was the Clifford Constable's silverware that was sent to the Queen's bedroom to be used by her during her visit. There are newspaper reports that say that she was going to come here on a hot air balloon, but I'm not sure how realistic that is. Right, was. right. Well, <laughs> you know, it's always a good story to tell. That's what mm -hmm. I always think. When you, when you have these wonderful historic houses, it's about mm -hmm. how many stories that you can tell and you know, whether or not they're true or not. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Do you know what is extraordinary about this room though, as you said, it was, a, you know, you just said that it was a very much used room right on, you know, through even to today, if you think mm -hmm. about it, it's being used because yes. there's visitors coming through, which is wonderful and learning about, uh, of course, the history of Burton Constable. But I think as the American in me, when any time I see long galleries, I. I almost can't believe that it was used for exercise, but that's yes. what, it, you know, going up and down, especially here in England when the weather 
mm. many times isn't fantastic. <laughs> yes, I believe it's 22 times up and down equals a mile. So it has so, been counted. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. 22 times up and down equals a mile. Oh, I, so, yes. I should challenge myself. Mm -hmm. Have you done that before, Philippa? Have you? <laughs> uh, no, but I know the guides sometimes do if they're in here and it's a very quiet day. The volunteers just, will do that we'll just for their steps. Times. Each room you visit at Burton Constable has its own atmosphere and story to tell. In the 18th century, William Constable's passion for collecting resulted in an amazing cabinet of curiosities. So this is all William Constable's Cabinet of Curiosities. Okay, so William Constable, the Georgian, yeah. who we yeah. see a lot of his work absolutely. as far as in mm -hmm. the fabric of the building, also as a collector? Yeah, is it absolutely. So uh, he once described himself as a virtue. He gives a long list of his accomplishments that include astronomy, gardening, science. Uh, this is, it's similar to a modern Van de Graaff generator. So it would have harnessed static electricity. Oh my goodness. And he was doing a lot of e electrical experiments in his house to the extent that he nearly blew it up at one point because <laughs> he was doing some experiments with John Arden in the long gallery. And all of a sudden there was a big flash and a bang and some smoke. And we were quite lucky he didn't set the house on fire if we're entirely honest. But no, he Is collected it... everything from geology to scientific instruments, telescopes, you right. name it. He was a typical gentleman of the enlightenment. He just wanted to understand the entire world. He, he right. was a natural philosopher to use their terminology and he wanted to know everything a lot of this stuff William would have learned about or collected on his grand tours of Europe yes of course it was the big everybody did a grand Absolutely. tour I mean if you were powerful mm -hmm. and um, you know you would go on the grand tour to um, to discover the world mm -hmm. historic houses are full of surprises but I couldn't quite believe it when Philippa showed me one of the highlights of the collection. The skeleton of a 58-foot sperm whale. So we affectionately know this whale as Constable Moby. It is amazing enough, the only real-life whale that appears in the book Moby Dick, uh, in as much as it was stranded on the seashore not far from here in 1825. Right. Sir Clifford Constable decided to rescue it. About 10 years later, he finally got around to doing something with it and put it on iron mountings in the parkland. And you can still see the iron mountings leaning against the wall today. Right. It was a sensation. You got Victorian tourists coming from all over the place. You got scientists such as a gentleman called Beale who wrote a book on whales and he described it in intricate detail. We think he was a bit invented with some of the facts and that he described the ribs opening and closing like a fan and we've no idea how they would have managed to do that no but either way it came to the attention of Herman Melville and he actually pretty much copied and pasted this so much for plagiarism into Moby Dick so we have the only whale that's mentioned in Moby Dick oh my. that actually existed in real life so it's in here now and are people coming to see this maybe as much as they did during the Victorian era or do you want to do something with it? Because now it's obviously been taken away and it's here housed and stored, but for the public to see as well. So we're really hoping that at some point in the not too distant future, we'll get some money to make this room a better display room for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and we will actually remount it on an iron on a metal structure. Right, so that it right. looks once again like it's it, like kind of swimming in the sea. Yes. That, well, that would be fantastic. I mean, it's absolutely extraordinary, though. I mean, I've definitely never seen a whale skeleton before, much less the one from Moby Dick. Visiting Burton Constable Hall is the most wonderful historic journey. From the beauty and drama of the Staircase Hall and Long Gallery, to the incredible cabinet of curiosities. But at its core, Burton Constable has always been a family home, and the family still retain apartments in the South Wing, where I met Rodrika Straker and her son, Jack. Mm -hmm. 
I'm in the private part of the house. I feel very honored right now. So thank you, thank you very much. And it feels very much like the private parts, the, the home. And it's a, it is a bit of a contrast from sort of coming from the long gallery, if you like, um, into here. But this was the entire house. Burton Constable was your home when you were growing up. Is that right? It was. This was, to be fair, this was always the private side of of the house because when you have, a, as you know, a house open to the public, you have to have a little bit of you time and yes. family privacy. Um, and this was always the, the private side. And this room was the converted kitchens when my grandfather moved back here. They were, uh, the house was requisitioned during the Second World War right. by, the, the, by the army. And the family moved out in the 20s due to not being able to keep it up family moved out to a, a smaller house for about 25, 30 years. And then back in the 50s, my grandfather moved back in and ah. converted this wing for, the, for himself and, and, and his wife and my, my father's parents. And, um, and this was the kitchens, but it, it's a really lovely family home. Yeah. It really is, the yeah. sort of back part of it. Um, and we're really lucky actually, yes. to have had that privacy. When I was growing up, we were open to the public all the time, um, and it's all I can ever remember. And this was a, the, the proper retreat. You could run back in when you were right. scared by something or just overwhelmed by the amount of people who came for big occasions um, at weekends. Yes. There was always a function on. Right, always. There were always people here milling about. And that, of course, was caused by, after the Second World War, Many of these homes, as you just mentioned, Burton Constable, same situation, was requisitioned. They come back to these homes, these historic house homeowners, they're in st such a state, but also they've lost their staff, they have death duties, they have taxes. And that's when we really start to see this decline of the country house, these historic houses, because the owners, and I suspect your father was the same way, they had to start thinking, oh my goodness, how am I going to repair the roof or restore the painting or the piece of furniture that's been in the family and needs to be preserved? These historic house homeowners started to open up their house to the public, and is that what your father had, he felt he had to do? He very much so. He inherited here in, the, in 1963, my grandfather died, and my grandfather had come from a sort of the typical Edwardian born, uh, been through many wars, thought about nothing else. Everything else was trivial compared to the life and death existence that they'd, that they'd lived. And um, when, they, when the family moved back, I mean, Burton Constable had been neglected effectively, um, uh, much loved but n neglected through not being able to afford to do anything with it. And also, as you say, there was no workforce, nobody was around, death duties, double death duties yes. in some cases. Um, <clears throat> had been neglected for about 50 years and um, and it, it had really deteriorated. So in 1963, when my father were in, inherited and my mother and he had been married about six months, um, <gasps> yeah, oh my um, goodness. they tried to offer it to the National Trust, couldn't afford to take it on. It wasn't viable, as you'd call it, I suppose. Right. So they couldn't give it away. Uh, they really couldn't. And that's when they thought, that's it, we're going to have to start to be creative. So they went to see Bewley, Edward Montague, all of the houses that are just newly opened yes. with great ideas. Do we want to have a zoo? Do we want to have a, um, a historic car collection? Do we want to have, well, what do we want to right. have? We're an hour east of everywhere. Um, and where, where can we glean our um, interest? And it was really on the ground weekends with interests like custom car rallies and traction engine rallies and country fairs and and that brought in 40 50 60,000 visitors visitors a year but notably only about 10 15 percent of those ever went through the house and it was it did, my father reckon my parents recognized that it wasn't the house that was attracting them but it was they that needed to be attracted in order to keep the house going and to begin the program of restoration um, right. and and that brought a big government grant to restore the roof and that's really where the tipping point came in the 70s where it became potentially viable right and they said right we are going to do this thing and they worked for 30 years hardly took a holiday oh my. didn't really look up I think until right. um, my mother died in 1989 and then my father couldn't couldn't really cope because he'd run out of steam ideas 
Well, and he lost his sort of lifelong partner, and it was it sounds like they were much a team, very much a team, yeah. doing this together. They they were, and they they'd opened up to functions and yes. weddings and and you know started the band, started didn't they? They started a band in the 60s yeah. called the Hullabaloos, and they took that to America. They tried everything, literally everything. <laughs> and you were absolutely right. So many historic houses needed to adjust to post-war Britain, and homeowners had to be inventive, with many opening their doors to the public. Burton Constable survived by the ingenuity of Rodriguez's parents. But... After the death of her mother in 1989, change became inevitable. And so my f father said, we must keep the collections of Burton Constable because that which remains here does so simply because nobody's sold it. The house is a collection of, of uh, you know, historic um, amalgamations of families. Yes, And that is fascinating in its own right, and everything that Philippa talks about is uh, lots of generations of constables, but also whom they married, bringing in various different elements of those mm. families. And, and so there's a proper story, a family genealogy story, which, which is evidenced by all the, the, the collections. So Dad always said, I do not want to sell the collections. This is the one thing that is telling the story. Um, and then to keep the family in it because they felt that that was the most important living history. Absolutely. As an educational tool. Yes. Um, and, and, a, and, and sort of conserve the living as well as the, as, as, as the artifact uh, within it. To secure Burton Constable's long-term future, in 1992, the Burton Constable Foundation was established. With this arrangement, Rodriguez's father did all that he could to ensure the long-term survival of the hall and its collection. And with part of Burton Constable remaining a family home, the living history continues. It was such a relief for my father because then it wasn't going to be a burden, what he considered to be an, an right. unachievable goal yes. for Jack. Um, right. Who was by then two. <laughs> but he'd but already but he saw claimed. But he saw the potential. <laughs> right, right. Of course he did. Of course he did. You're a remarkably precocious child. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. So, yeah. he, so he, in one sense, had insight. He felt that, okay, this is going to be the best for the family and for future generations. Because you are still here. You're living here, you, as you so perfectly pointed out, and that's what I think is so what's wonderful about these historic houses. And we're all, you know, most of us living in historic houses are a part of the historic houses, the organization, because it's about the living history. It's the it's the the history that has existed in your case for 700 years. You're still here, and yes, the public can enjoy it as they should, but you're able to then continue with your memories that will be passed on to your children and children, children, and those stories can still be told. It didn't stop with your father. No. It's wonderful. I mean, I, of course, had a fantastic walk around and just to see the history then, but also the living history now and having, you know, Jack here and... Well, I think it's, I think it's very important to have <coughs> some guiding principles of sort of family values in terms of where you want to go. Uh, but you've got to move with the times, you know, you can't, you can't, you, know, you can't sort of just try one thing and say, well, that's what we're going to do yes. for the next 50 years. Uh, it's been very interesting what, um, for me, uh, as my mum said, you know, grandpa was always thinking about a few generations in the future. And I've, I've grown up knowing I've been sort of tied into this place since, since day one. Um, and it's been really interesting seeing uh, mum and grandpa through the 1990s and 2000s because um, they were obviously the, the, the family trustees, um, keeping a, I suppose, uh, keeping a hand on the tiller, um, yeah. uh, you know, for, through, for the first 20 years of the foundation's existence. And then I think, from my end, I've I've been involved very much on the fringes for sort of many years, and then more actively probably in the last um, five or six years. Mm. So it's really been fascinating to have these two very inspiring forebears, you know, in my lifetime to to, to look up to. And uh, and we're now in the fun part because I, I moved I moved up. Yes. in September last year, so I've been 
on put in in position, I suppose, for what six six eight months. Yes. Um, not very long. Not very long. No. <laughs> Such a um, quick learner. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Well, that's very kind of you to say, but it's terribly yeah. important to to for the next generation to just just segue in really quickly, but also very you know very enthusiastically, because yes. the lesson for well from Burton Constable or any of the other other historic houses that that have made it through the mm. sort of night of hell, yes. um, <laughs> relatively, um, is never give up. And you're much better placed if you're in, if you're in occupation and you're indentured. That's right. To be able to see the point mm -hmm. of why you're doing this yes. and what will come if you really want yes. it to happen. You look at the outside of these houses, you look at the inside of these houses, and you have to make a decision. Am I going to give it my all, or am I just going to sort of, you know, occasionally just let it sit, do its thing, and when it needs to be done, something needs to be done, needs to be done. And I think some people are in, in two minds about that. I'll just sort of let it carry on and function as it is, and great, but I think the three of us can collectively say, we're not in that camp to just let it just carry on and function as it is. We want it to continue for future generations. And that does mean thinking out of the box and you're gonna get some things right, you're gonna get some things wrong, but hopefully you get more right than you get wrong. And so that it can, um, it can carry on and it is looking to the future. A slight side story, but my room, my room is um, up there uh, and it's next to one of the more, uh, I say more haunted rooms in the house. And people often ask her, God, it's really scary being in the house all, all on your own or something. And because not in, probably about once a month or something, I wake up in the middle of the night and hear a door slamming next door, um, which is pretty unusual because it's, right, right. because it's, you know, it's alarmed and locked up and everything. Uh, and people go, oh, that must be terrifying. I say, well, not really, because it's been a pretty happy house for 700 years and we haven't had any sort of murders or anything. And, and it's probably, <laughs> exactly, yeah. it's probably an ancestor yet. Yes. <laughs> it's probably yes. an ancestor. And, and I sort of think, well, rather reassuring, you know. They're, 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 they're looking after you. Exactly. And the, and the fact that they haven't haunted me means that it's not going too badly wrong so far. So no. I think, you know, it's a good, good. It's a good, good canary in the mind there. But <laughs> Yes. If, they, if things start getting thrown about, you know, that's when <laughs> to start worrying. But it's that, I think, um, I think, I think being able to tap into that, that sort of long line of innovation and passion yes. for a place yes. um, is very, is, is very yeah. important. As, both as, uh, as someone who lives here and wants to you know, look forward to the next generations, um, but also for the perspective of marketing the house to the public, you have to have a story and a narrative. And I think that, that the... Um, it's this, this rather mad family that's lived here for so long. Yeah. It's the only thing that makes sense, really. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. Well, um, thank you both so much for your time. But I just want to say, you know, here's to the future um, for, uh, for you, Jack. And uh, now that you've taken on the reins, you've only been here six to eight months. But well, it's, I'd say more of, a, more of a joint venture at the minute. But, that's right. but you know, <laughs> but yeah. it's, it's, it's the both of you together. It is. It's wonderful. And it's taking what your mother has given you, shown you, and using that, and then moving it forward. So here's to the future of Burton Constable. It's in good hands. Thank you, well, thank very, you very much. much. Thank you.